Hey, good morning. Welcome back to Trust or Us. Today we're at the 2024 Puget Sound Antique Tractor and Machinery Association's annual threshing bee, or vintage farming day is what they call it now. Uh, I thought we'd do a quick walk around the showgrounds, kind of show you what we have to offer or what the club has to offer. Right now we're standing in the engine field. We've got a couple engine buildings. That building right there is brand new. It was just done here recently. We've got some more engines over here. As you can see, we're bringing in more engines in. This is the second day of the show. And we will make our way over to the next building. So here's one the one big engine building. So we've got a big atlas sitting here. And here we got a Washington Ironworks out of Seattle, Washington. I believe this engine ran one of the bridges down around Seattle. And here we got a, a Waukesha. Looks like a six cylinder diesel. It's got about a five foot tall radiator. It's got a generator on the end, a Kato. Big cat. I have no idea what this is. Looks like it makes some kind of pressure. Ah, boiler, the heater. And here we got a Corliss. Monster. And look way up there. This is like one of the first big pieces they put on the showgrounds. I think the first building they put up was the barn. Uh, then the announcer's booth. And then this. And the bookstore. Hey, you know what? Let's go up here and take a quick peek. Watch your step. They got this run off a steam donkey. Although I don't know if the steam donkey doesn't look like the steam donkey's operational, so they're probably using the, one of the steam engines. Like this case. I don't know if they're using the case for this, but I saw they've run this in the past because the steam donkey, the boiler's out of spec. My hand can go like nine and a half inches across. It's more than three of my hands. This thing is huge. And then here we have the blacksmith shop. They have a steam hammer sitting in there. Then all these buildings down here, they're all rented out or leased out or owned by People that put the money up for this building. I'm not sure how that works because I don't have I don't have a part in it. But people can store their stuff in there and uh, they don't have to haul it home. They just drag it out and fire it up and display it, work on them, whatever they want to do. And this whole show is held just outside of Linden, Washington at Bertheson Park. And this here is Bertheson Barn. It is a very, very big barn. Um, it has a uh, main floor. It's got a uh, downstairs, sorta. Good grief. I mean, this is this is barn that they held community events in when it was when it was first built. Right now, it's got some old horse-drawn equipment in here, a couple thrashing machines back here, but it also had a ramp right down there, so your animals can come up the ramp and into the barn. It doesn't have much of a hay mow. There's no real upstairs except for, used to be something right here. I believe this is where they kept their animals. 
Uh, you can't see nothing in here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Big old barn. You got logs for beams. And it's been preserved by uh, members of the club. It's not part of the actual show grounds, but it is it is on the grounds that the show is held on. And here's the new big engine shed that just got completed just just recently, uh, probably in the last month or so. It's got a lean-to off of this side. Here we got a stationary D engine. Big Twin City stationary, a Moline stationary. You got a Western uh, right here, two cylinder. They run it on propane. A few other miscellaneous. Got a Marshall uh, crawler, Caterpillar 60 crawler. You have a Holt right here that just they got it running here in the last couple years steering's not the best i don't know if they've worked on it since they got it running but uh well, it looks like they're still still playing with it more engines displays here we got fresh dirt that they're trying to keep people out of but here's the inside of the building i'm not sure the size i don't I don't think it, it might be 40 by 60. They got gravel down both sides, concrete down the middle. They got uh, the weed in here for thrashing for the show because we had rain earlier this week, right before the show started. Turns out we had about an inch to inch and a quarter of rain. Again, that's not a lot for us, or that is a lot for us, especially this time of year. So, more of the engine field, let's go to the Rumleys. All right, well, let's make our way to the Rumleys and the steam. Here we've got a 1929 Galleon motor grader. The McCormick daring for power. Case, little Fleet Track 20, an Eagle, a Titan. Oh, here we got some steam running. Nice case steamer. And then they stacked the Rumleys from small to large. I don't know the sizes or you know by model, but they have one of the coolest sounds. Nice look to them. And this is our biggest one on the grounds. Hi Fred. Nice crusty original. Okay, let's go take a look at the steam. And before we get to the steam, I just saw this. Old sea grave out of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Linden's uh, fire department it's one of their original trucks it looks fairly complete <laughs> they got some newer gear sitting in here it's all right got a picture of Mount Baker which is one of our major viewpoints that somebody painted on here Looks like it still operates to a point, at least runs and drives. I don't know if the pumps work. Still have a hose on here that's uh, dried and cracked. Threw some aluminum ladders on with at least one wood ladder, which would make uh, more appropriate for the time. All right, let's go take a look at the steam. Here we got a great big Rumley. Well, not the biggest. Definitely a good size. Which doesn't make sense anyways, right? Even if someone loosened it, this one also loosened it. That's 
been good seeing a nut for a year. Here we have a case. And it looks like it went through uh, state inspection as they uh, got the numbers written down for the barrel thickness. All the way up to the steam dome. This is, oh, this is a case 40 horse right there. Old Abe. Alright, we're going to come over here to Gar Scott. He's got a little steam generator on it so he can run his own lights. And a headlight. And in here we have a big Rumley. I mean, I got to I got to back up to be able to get it all. Over a thousand cups of steam. That's how, how much of it is Very powerful. You can easily steam. You can easily get up to 900 to 1,000 pounds of pressure. Look at that. Massive. Got the extensions on the back wheels. Here's the Rumley decal. Maybe 200 pounds. Look at the detail. I love that. They have to be checked regular make sure I love early advertising. Oh, where to next? It's a recent addition, the Lee and Charmaine Headerly Pavilion. That was put up in 2020. It's a nice food court area, meeting area, weddings, whatever. Uh, it can be rented. Hot water. Here's the club's barn. In every direction. And if you were anywhere close, you could not escape it. And this little pole and barn here was the engine shed where the new building is. Just, But this was just really for the western. Up. But now it's covered in a so straw pile. So it's serving a second use. Are every one of these steam engines we got old Larry McPhail up here announcing the slow races. Before the show, uh, the John Deere's. Just got done running. We got vendors, we got bleachers for the parade, and sitting relaxing. Every one of the, the bookstore be inspected and it has to pass the test in order to run them here on the ground. Because and it looks like this case uh, ended up stopping. Really important. And we, as far as I know, I've been here about 30. So we got a couple new additions. We got this church building here. It wasn't a church, but. Uh, they kind of made it into a church, it was moved here to the showground as part of display. Named it the Ferthison Park Chapel. Decorated it up. Sometimes they'll get like a two or three piece band in here and start singing and playing music. And I think they've actually started using this for weddings, you know, as a a rental as part of our, our showgrounds. So we'll go back out and we'll check out the next building. So I'm not sure what the original tent of this building was, but now they've got it set up as a schoolhouse. So we'll walk inside here. They got the old school desk set up. Kids can come in here and they can color. Got a globe hanging, the piano, the American flag. It should be in every schoolhouse. Got the chalkboard. This is an old one too. This is, yeah, that's an old chalkboard. Got the school teacher's desk. There's some of the kids coloring assignments turned in. Got cursive writing demonstrations. And they're stringing up some more lights in here, decorating. And I'm walking right through the middle of all of it. Thank you, ladies. All right, we're gonna go to a log cabin next. It's two-story, but it's not set up as a two-story right now. The 
upper floors not in the beams are there but not the floor and this is where you'll see the quilts Good morning. Hi. How you doing? Good, you? Good. A little pot belly stove there in the corner. Okay, let's go down to the other end of the grounds where the trackers are. Be sure to come down and see Ray Lynn by the windmill. She's got a booth there with some real delicious treats. And I'm going down there after a while if she's got any left and, and buy some cold drinks there's larry he's, he's reading off the daily schedules for everybody that is here so far again this is a four oh, let me get out of the sun this is a four-day show uh, this is thursday the second day you know, wednesday thursday they're always slow which is okay it gives us a chance to get everything ironed out before we get real busy on friday saturday You know what we should do next we should go into the into the, into the trees here got some more stuff we can look at before we get down to the trackers man this is about the prettiest part of the showgrounds in my opinion this is more like a cathedral than than the little church we just looked at i mean look at the way the sunlight is coming in through the trees it's all cleared out underneath here. You don't have any underbrush. This is pretty much mostly cedars through here. We have a few a few fir trees. Got one here. One there. We got some bigger cedar trees. Some of these are, you know, 50, 70 years old. We got a bigger cedar there that's probably close to 100. And this is also where the drag saw um, demonstration happens. another steam donkey over there by the bathrooms and we'll get over to this this is our steam powered sawmill uh, it's been in disrepair for a while they've been slowly putting it back together the foundation for the whole rail bed of the saw has been compromised the rotting it's on wood is rotting and you know falling apart so nothing was level uh, this steam donkey here is from Washington Ironworks, builder's number 3467 out of Seattle, Washington. They just put the, the hat back on this uh, Tuesday night. Uh, the boiler got retubed and it is now functional once again. And she's hot, she's got steam. You got your tender there. Yeah, whistle still works. Here you got some rough cut lumber out of the mill. That's where your logs go up. And I'm I'm just briefly explaining because I don't know all the terms for this, but it goes on to the I don't know what they call that a car or a carrier or what but the lug goes on there you got the measuring stick to determine what cut uh, how thick a cut you want to make oh looks like we got a detroit diesel sitting here it's a six cylinder in line Got all of her cleat track sitting over here next to the the planer mill. I don't know if they've run this this year. You know what? There's nobody's operating it. We'll just go right inside. I know each year they take the oilers off. Then they cap it and put the oilers away because oilers like to go missing. And this whole unit's run off uh, a TD20 international power unit. Big six cylinder diesel. Oh no, this is gas. 
Excuse me, this thing is gas right there. Distributor. And right here we got a big rock crusher. I've seen the little one. This one's a big one. I don't know if we can get. There we go. It's a Pioneer Gravel Equipment Manufacturer. There's your tag. It's a model. 1929 is the model. We've had this working, but now it's just sitting on a. They poured a couple of concrete slabs, or not, and not a whole slab, but for the front and rear of this. Oh, I don't remember this. We got a concrete mixer. But when this thing runs, holy cow, she's loud. I mean, of course, you're crushing rocks, but the bigger they are, the more noise they make. All right, we got a small sawmill. Let's go take a look at that. Kitty rides. There we go. All your sawdust is going into the little trailer. We saw this guy earlier. Here we got another uh, wagon load of wheat uh, headed down to the thrashing machines, which we'll get to here shortly. Got a heart bar, old Oliver heart bar here, running the thick and thin. Is running the thick and thin sawmill. This is what they cut so far. This, uh, well, in one day, really. And they're discarded now, but all rough cut. I'm guessing they'll probably run the planer unless there's a problem with it. And run that, run those pieces through the planter later. Here's your scrap pile. Here's a unique piece. A little postal carrier. What's it say? West Coaster Mailster. Delivered April 1965. Gas powered. Seven and a half horsepower. This three wheeled lightweight mail delivery van is known as a Mailster. Seven different companies produce mails produced mailsters for the U.S. Post Office. Letter carriers began using these vehicles in the mid-1950s. Mailsters could hold about 500 pounds of mail in their compartments. Well, that's just cute. It still has like a, one of the original decals on it. But then right here you got a Wisconsin powered uh, wood saw. So you got a guy that will fire this up and he'll cut all that into small enough chunks to, wern, to run in the boilers of all the steam equipment. Oh, here we got an old McCormick coming. And here we got the chuck wagon on a McCormick chassis. There's your sticker on steel wheels. Really, it's used for more of a storage wagon now. Got the canvas curtain up there to drop down, keep the weather out. There's nothing really inside. Some old uh, bus seats and garbage. Check out the roof, how it's curved up in there. And cut that with a curve in it to keep the weather off. Here we got a hand-fed baler. Well, let's see if we can read that. It's an Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor baler. Somebody's been doing some restoration on it, cleaning cleaning it up and greasing. 
looks good here you got your uh, your bail ties all metal the wire is the rest of the rest of the wheat tractor for the threshing got threshing machines looks like they're getting set up and getting ready to start thrashing wheat and here's my favorite part of the show the Molines G1350 705 here's old grandpa you've seen him here's the you that I've been having headaches and pains with lining sheet metal up and fuel system issues I think I've got it sorted out here's the nice R that the daughter likes to drive my R got a couple German holders this one's restored and you got a second one that's nice uh, original two-stroke diesels check this out this is early I don't know what the serial numbers are on this but this is a versatile check that out I think that's a V8 Cummins or maybe a V6 This runs and drives. I saw him drive it and park it over here. Oh, I see the serial number tag. Let's go check that out. Bareback with had two sets of remotes. Tires are mint. Let's see if we can get up here and see. It's a D118. Versatile. Made in Canada. Check out the dash. <laughs> Check this out. They got a chain for uh, holding your exhaust. That's a pretty nice piece. All right, quick walk through the IHs, Farm All International. Here's a little crusty. I'm just gonna do a quick walk through there. As I went pretty in depth last year on this, so if you wanna see an up close personal. You know what, in last year, I picked the crusty tractor. And I haven't seen it, well not that I've really looked, but I need to pick a new one. This could be a new candidate. I don't want to pick the same one each year. And there's a crusty, rusty A back there, but I kind of like this H. Oh, there's a crusty C back there. <laughs> Farmal C. Don't get me wrong. Some cases and more internationals over here. Hey, there's that steamer. Hey, there's an old, uh, that might be a case car driving away from us. Got some Massey's, more cases. There's a Leland. Somebody's been doing work to this. The engine is cleaned up. They put a mini alternator on it. Got the oil pan painted and cleaned up. Got nice tires on, or at least this tire is nice on the back. The wheel weight's on the front. Have to keep an eye. You have to remind me, keep an eye out. I am looking for a crusty tractor. All right, let's go down here to the Alice Chalmers. Okay, here's the Alice. Alice Chalmers is, <clears throat> excuse me, Alice Chalmers is the featured tractor of our show this year. So we'll spend more time on these. Yeah, here you have an open station 7050. Seventy twenty. 
I think their conditioning works in this one. I think this belongs to my neighbor. You got a high crop 70 20. Have an 80 70. 80 50 with duels. Both of these are four wheel drives, as you can see. I know this guy. He, I think he said he's owned this for 30 years now. It's 1985, 80 70, 170 horse four-wheel drive he's got the duels on it he's I think he said he's been to the engine and transmission in this the rest is still original uh, we're talking about it it's like other than for depreciation value on taxes why would you get new equipment I mean he farms quite a lot with his equipment I mean that's what he does for a living but he's not like out in uh, out in the prairies, you know, doing huge farms. He's not that big, obviously, with 170 horse tractors, but it is so cool to drive by a field and see this older stuff out there working. He works on himself. Uh, yeah, he's he's got some nice equipment. Here we got a 7580, and it's original working clothes. Hey, there's your... Uh, Dealer tag, Walter Implement Incorporated, Odessa, Washington. Here we got a four-wheel drive 2020 Elvis, 1983. And then we have one here, same model on singles. Alright, we'll get... Uh, Get around over here. This is a Steiger, Alice Chalmers, 440 with the Cummins, the V8, 1974. Which one are you gonna put? This one. Got a 224-wheel drive. Both 1970s. And most of these Alice's are owned by one person. Uh, yeah, I believe. He said he brought 34 tractors here to the show. But he just turned 80 years old. Uh, we're on like a nine year rotation, I believe it is. So this might be his last time bringing them all out like this. Got a 220, a 210, another 210. I love these series. 200. With a cab, got a 190. A 180, a 170, and a 175. So I know a lot of you back out east, Midwest, wherever you're from, have seen this. This tractor used to reside here in London, Washington, but it's now in Bushland, Texas. They moved from here down south. Here it is. Serial number one. series the series 3 10 series 3 d12 series 2 d12 series 2 d15 there's a d15 they put them all in pretty much the order that they go there's a series 4 d17 here you have a high crop propane d19 wow and then he has a gas d19 and of course the trifecta he has a diesel d19 man he's got some nice stuff not daryl but 
Bob that has the big collection up here in the Northwest. We have a fairly nice original D19 diesel. Some gorgeous D21. And here is another special tractor locally. This is the first tractor in Whatcom County, over 100 horse, 1967 D21. So Bob is, Bob was our local Alice Chalmers dealer. Um, yeah, he uh, sold this at the dealership and then years later, I think he used this for custom field work too. And then later on he, uh, Sold it and bought it back, I believe. But according to this, this is the tractor that started their AC restoration and collection. Okay, next row. The WD45 diesel. Grill all the way out to the front. And a nice narrow front D17. A wide front D17. D14. It's more of a higher crop version than uh, this one. Huh. Yeah, that D D14 there doesn't really sit real tall, but it's taller than this one. So, got to be a reason for that that I'm not aware of. Now the D, WD45 diesel, WD, the G, Industrial B. Shoot, I think that's, that's hip high. That's uh, about three feet tall. Here you have a D21 made out of uh, Alice Chalmers 5015 compact tractor. That is just cute. WD, nice res restoration, single front. Original working clothes. 1948 WD. Looks like it still works on the farm. She's all crusty. That's another, uh, that's another crusty tractor award uh, opportunity. C A and a B. Okay, starting with this row, we have 160 with a loader. Nice looking original. 620, a 416. W D. The, yeah, this is. This thing just looks dripping wet with paint. This is gorgeous. It's 1946 Alice Chalmers B. I am not sure what that is kind of looks like a WC but it isn't it's bigger there's no information on it a cast into the radiator so it's unstyled you got the diamond cast into here and I'm not sure where the serial number tag is look at the size of that carburetor on here massive let's take a quick look see if we can find an ID tag Sure. Yeah, I'm not seeing an ID tag on this. I may not know where to look either. And I see a part number, but I don't know if that's the model number. Got a U2514. Yeah, I don't know. Let's move on. Again, I'm not sure. WC maybe, unstyled. WD45, oh, that's crusty too. Original working clothes. Industrial 40, beautiful. Well, that's just a wee one there, a little Alice. D14, and here we got a 444 Alice Chalmers Baylor original. Looks good. Then you have a restored D15 diesel hooked up to that baler. Look at that. 
That's just all sorts of sexy right there. Good. Good. Okay, we're getting close to the end. Hang with me. Stay tough. MWD. Unstyled Alice. This one's got a tag. But I can't read it. That's all right. Another green Alice. This thing's on steel, a little Alice B. That's nice. Another nicely restored WD 45. Here you got a shop mule, 1956. T17. Hey, here's Twitchy. Say hi, everybody. Got a high clearance uh, WD, 1952. This is an industrial WD. Okay. Heavier front axle, no grill. Oh, and Rand is pestering me to bring our garden tractor, and I didn't. Here we have a, a B10, a B112. On that B10, that's got a disc on the back. Nice. B212. A 310, 314 hydro. Not sure what that one is. And then we got a homesteader. Up next, we have a, the Wheatland, another trifecta, D17 propane, D17 uh, diesel, and the gas model. Move around the corner. Here's a little stationary. Looks like it's probably off a combine with that uh, screen to keep the chaff out of the radiator. Have a high crop. Propane Series 4 D17. There's your ads. This was in uh, Antique Power, July, August uh, 2019, Volume 31, Issue 5. This is Mr. Bob Vanderplug himself, owner of the 34 Plus that he brought. This is a truck, uh, it's a Dodge job rated custom. I think they said this is a truck like that used to be a dealer truck, not the original truck, but it was one, or one like one. So if you come to our show, you got two gates to come through. You got the, the gate up here on Bertheson Road, that's gate I would call it gate one. Gate two is over by the Bertheson Barn. Uh, across the road from gate one, you can pay to park, or you can go to the Westfield down Badger Road and uh, park for free. And then you can take a shuttle through the beautiful woods, a lot like what we're looking at right here. A bunch of cedars and firs and maples. And uh, you get a free ride through the park right up to gate I would call gate number two by the barn. Uh, it's just, it's gorgeous out here. This is, uh, I believe this is the biggest show in Washington State. By far not the biggest show in the country. But it's the biggest show in Washington State. They have the biggest, the largest steam uh, collection of tractors. Not the club itself, but people that live around here and bring tractors to our show or leave them in the barn over the winter. Uh, they're talking about uh, earlier how some film crew wanted to make a movie, but uh, they needed a steam engine. And 
nobody had one until they finally got somehow got in contact with us or not us because I'm not actively involved with the club anymore I just show up participate um, they got a hold of the club talked to the club president it's like yeah we can get a steamer for you so they hauled it from here over to Spokane Washington I believe they said and that's like a seven hour drive just in a car so if you throw that on a truck you know a low boy I don't know if that's a nine hour drive I'm not sure anyway yeah we have beautiful showgrounds so now we're down here at uh, the south end of the property the John Deere display is we have a like a 1950s uh, dealership set up over here we'll go take a look at got a double John Deere R nice display a 60 a 50 an M a 320 and a D here you got a trailer load of small tractors. You got a, a Bronco, a Cub, an LA, an MC, an M, and I believe a Pony. Yeah, Massey Harris Pony. And here we are at the southernmost eastern corner of the property. Got John Deere's all over down here. There's an original John Deere sign that was donated by the local John Deere dealer. Uh, at the time it was called Northwest Washington Implement. You got a 730 high crop. Last year, if you look at the video from last year on the John Deere part, it was uh, the John Deere D's 100th anniversary and there's a bunch of D's here, several spokers. Got some for sale, you got a John Deere LA for sale for $3,000. Here's a nice original 50. I like that. And the cultivators. Too bad the cultivators. The cultivators don't look like they came with this tractor like maybe later. I would think they'd have more paint on it. But maybe not. Here's your dealer sign. Two legs. And over here. Here's the local John Deere's one of their old service trucks that somebody found, bought, and restored. I believe it's for sale, but I don't see a sale sign for sale sign in it. I think this is like a 54 or 55 Chevrolet. Early 55. Washington Implement Company. Nice inside as it is out. All right. So this building was done by the Cascade Two Cylinder Club several years ago. Uh, oh yeah, there it is, 2007. Got some restored plows up front. Let's go inside, see who's here. They got a little bit of counter on the yeah. Mike's is real. The original is smaller. Check this out. Yeah. Showing some old John Deere ads. The marketing information coming out of a super pool give the seller an edge. Let's listen a moment and see. This is actually a Minneapolis Moline counter that was donated and painted. More display in here than anything else, but they do have some toys and parts and boxes. Here you have a plow beam, walking, walking plow beam, Syracuse, New York, USA. Still has an original John Deere tag on it. I bet you that's the price, $4.23. Can't read the tag. It's a Washington dealer anyway. Here's the group that uh, all worked on the building. They have a display. Backside of their parts counter. 
some oil, filters, hoses. Got a Van Brunt grain drill. Looks like somebody's done a little work on it. You can still see the original Van Brunt and the scroll on the back of it. All right, let's go into the shop. Here you got a seed cleaner. Thank you. Got a few tools. Here's your valve grinder. Valve facer, I think. Oh, here you can check your spark plugs or you can just grab it thing. Get electrocuted. Got some old tools here. There's an old push mower, sickle mower. Don't get in front of that, you lose your toe. And then some equipment. There's another old original sign. The D. Laval uh, milking equipment as one of the things that they used to sell. Sycamore horse drawn, corn planter horse drawn, beautiful manure spreader, and a John Deere horse drawn wagon. How cool is that? It's with original color. Here you can just make out. The original logo right there. Hammer mill. Cultivator. There's wood harrow. There's the sulky to operate. Whatever you need. Quite possibly for that harrow. Oh yeah, they got an ad for it right there. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching, appreciate it. Uh, if you like this stuff, hit the like button, let me know. If you like it, then I know to keep doing this. It's an annual show, so once a year you can just about count on me coming to our, my own show and filming this and uh, then putting it out for everybody to see our corner of the country and what equipment we used and how we used it so anyway thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video bye hey before we go almost forgot i need to pick cressy tracker award i like it with the most original parts on it doesn't have to be tires but original rims uh decals and muffler that's fine it's not chrome or anything so i'm gonna go with this wd alice chalmers it's 1948 seems to be named arthur so uh that ain't crusty i don't know what it is still has original decal on the air cleaner As far as I know, I'm gonna call this the most original crusty tracker at the show for 2024. Got the lights on it, built pulley. It's had oil change not too long ago, although it's pretty crusty on top. But built pulley, there we go. Oh, well, they did put a newer seat on it. Was turned over so we can't really tell anyway that's it this time that is it i promise thanks again for watching and we'll see you later